we all have unfettered access, unlimited access to the wind and to the sun. We have unlimited access to the things that grow. We have unlimited access to the moving water. These are inexhaustible supplies of clean and renewable energy. By developing those clean fuels as part of our strategy to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, we will democratize our economies and give everyone a shot at prosperity. In California, now here in California, green investments is, is expanding. I can tell you that even though our economy is right now struggling, and even though the housing market has been declining rapidly, but what holds up our economy and what creates kind of a stable economy are other industries like biotechnology, high technology, and specifically green technology. I mean, I tell you, yesterday I was visiting a place where they stopped development of a uh, home. They ran out of money. The workers were let go. They were unemployed now. And at the same time, just a few hours later, I visited a plant up in Sacramento. And that plant was a solar plant. It was called Opti Solar. And there they were just renting a new facility, a million square feet of, of, of warehouse space. And they're creating a thousand new jobs right up there because they cannot get enough people to manufacture the solar panels. So the solar panel manufacturing and green technology is booming. And this is why, of course, there's so much capital venture also coming to California. More than 40% of venture capital is coming right here to California all for green technology. And that's why the Wall Street Journal has called our green economy the next California gold rush. The United States Conference of Mayors says that green investment will create 2.5 million jobs in the next 10 years. So these are staggering amounts uh, of, of jobs that we can create and good things for the economy. And that's why in California we have been adopting green policies as fast as we can develop them because we know this is the only way to go, and that's how we can inspire to create new technology, which I think will save us all. It's all about technology, because we all know that the guilt trip that we've put on people had not worked. They tell them that they should not use the jacuzzi, or the big, uh, large plasma TV, uh, or to drive with a big SUV, a Hummer, or something like that. that <laughs> or to fly with a plane. All of those things did not work because the fact of the matter is the people should use a big television uh, set, but it should be powered by solar. They should go and sit in the jacuzzi, in the biggest jacuzzi in the world, but it should be powered by solar. They should fly the airplane whenever they want, but they should have maybe a different kind of design engine so we don't use fossil fuel. Or they should go and stay in their SUVs and in their Hummers, but maybe have that Hummer being powered by electric motors or something like that. So it's technology what it really needs to be changing, not that we're driving a car or taking a jacuzzi or anything. Else. And God forbid we would stop the jacuzzi. But, uh, <laughs> uh, but anyway, I just, I, I, just, I just want to give you... So this is why we here in California, we are passing those laws, and I've gone through some of them just the other day, which is the Green Building Initiative to make our government buildings more energy efficient by the year 2015, or the hydrogen highway to make sure that people that have hydrogen-fueled cars can find higher fueling stations in, around the state, or the Million Solar Roof Initiative where we give tax incentives all over the state of California, <laughs> or our Ocean Action Plan to make sure that when ships come into our harbors that they, they use clean fuel, or AB32 to roll back our greenhouse gas emissions to the 1990 level by the year 2020, and then an additional 80% by the year 2050, or the world's first low-carbon fuel standard, or requiring cleaner engines on the cranes in our ports, and the list goes on and on and on. Uh, and that is exactly what we ought to do all over the world. This is very important, and this is why this conference was so important, and I think that great things have taken place here and have happened here. And as I've said yesterday, uh, when we sign our summit declaration at the wrap-up late on the day, that framework will help our negotiators next month in Poland and next year in Copenhagen as they draft the sequel or the successor to the Kyoto Protocol. And I think there were really detailed discussions that took place this last uh, two days here. And specifically, just to mention one about measurement, because you know that we all can be talking about different things when we talk about measuring the output of greenhouse gases. 
And it is the same as it was in the fitness world that I came from, which was my previous life. Not that I'm not still fit, but I mean uh, that uh, my, I was occupied, preoccupied about fitness at one point. But that there was for years and years the discussion when someone said that they have improved their fitness level by 20%. What did that mean? Did it mean that the heart rate improved by 20%? Did it mean that they ran faster by 20%? Did it mean that they ran longer? The distance uh, by 20%? Does it mean that they have dropped 20% of body weight when they step on the scale? Does it mean that they drop 20% when they take the body measurement or when they go into a tank that they have 20% less body fat? What does it really mean? Everyone had a different idea of what it meant to be fit or what it meant to improve your fitness. And the same is also the case in this area here when we talk about greenhouse gas emissions. We have talked about that here in California alone for the last few years. How do you really measure the output of greenhouse gases, and how do you control it? How do you put a specific measurement on in each one of the sectors, if it is a cement, or if it is transportation, if it is the forest that we are talking about at great extent here at this summit, and all of those things. So I'm glad that this conference has zeroed in on those kind of issues and have resolved them, because when you go to the next step, which is to Poland or to Copenhagen, then everyone is talking the same language and is in the same, going in the same direction and is on the same page, which is so important. So... Uh, I, I tell you that the, the damage that can be done because of global warming is staggering, and I think that the damage done by global warming in, in, this, is, in this great it, 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 to, to change that and to, to reverse it in the 21st century is going to be our biggest, biggest challenge. But if we work together, I am absolutely convinced that we can accomplish it. And the key thing here is, is that we have the public sector and the private sector and the nonprofit sector all work together. We have seen you know, great changes in the minds of the private sector already since we have uh, you know, come up with the various different laws here in California. If it's uh, retailers like Walmart and McDonald's that are building green stores and green outlets all over the world now, not just in California and America, but all over the world. And not just because the consumers feel better when they go there or that the food may taste, taste better, not at all. It is because green buildings cut costs and save our environment all at the same time. And this is exactly what I've been talking about five years ago when I ran for governor, that we can do both. We can protect the environment and we can protect the economy at the same time. As a matter of fact, those that are still concerned that maybe that it will hurt the economy when we protect the environment, I uh, took this very interesting newspaper clipping with me here that says, pollution saps states' economy, study says. This is the LA Times. This was uh, in one of the papers. It's a great, great story that talks about that actually how damaging it is to our economy if we don't protect the environment and if we don't fight global warming. So it is reversing now, which I'm very happy about that more and more stories are written about that so that those that are still doubting the whole thing know that this is the only way to go is to fight global warming and for all of us to work together. And uh, so we have reached a tipping point right now, I believe, and I know that we will get to that promised land on climate change, as I said, if we work together. So again, I want to say thank you to all of you for the great effort that you have made to come here today, and I'm looking forward to visiting all of your countries from wherever you came from and all your states at one point to go and help you promote uh, fighting global warming in your area here. So I, I want to send you all off. Um, uh, after this event is over and give you a challenge. The challenge is, and that's what I do always to myself, ask yourself every single day the question, have you done enough to fight global warming? Have you done enough to make sure that we're reducing our output of greenhouse gases? Have you been creative enough? Have you put the spotlight on that issue enough? Have you made this enough of a priority? Ask yourself those questions because you will see it motivates you every day then to do something about it, not just to make it one of many things that you're dealing with. Thank you very much. Thank you.